Aloha, this is Kevin Kimball from BYU Hawaii and here I'm going to talk through an in-class review sheet I created for my class today. I wanted to show them the solution and maybe talk through it a little bit better than I did in class today. So the basic idea is you are given these opening balances from the prior year's ending balance sheet. So the December 31st XO prior year balance sheet will be our beginning 11X1 balance sheet numbers. Now, I've just shown you the balances. I'm not indicating here whether these are debits or credits, but this is something you would need to know. Assets normally have a debit balance, so these are actually all debits, and liabilities and equity normally have credit balances, so these are all credit balances. The way you know which account, what the normal balance is, is the side of the T account that increases the account, that's the normal balance. So assets are increased on the debit side, so their normal balance is debit. Liabilities and equity are increased on the credit side, so their normal balance is credit. So this is what we're starting with at the very beginning of the year. Then during the year, we identified 10 transactions that are going to influence these balances and maybe even influence other accounts that are not on this list, such as revenues and expenses. You will need to analyze the 10 transactions, record the appropriate journal entry in the journal boxes provided below, which I'll show you in a minute, then label the T accounts below for all the beginning accounts and any new ones. Put in the opening balances from here and then post the transactions from the journals and compute the revised balances. So let me show you the transactions. Here are our 10 transactions. Here are the T accounts. So you'll label each of these T accounts with the names of these accounts that are provided at the top and put in the balances. So these would all go in as debits in their respective T accounts and these would go in as credits. Then you're going to post the information off of these journal entries into the T accounts, compute the new balances, and then the new balances will go on to the trial balances, and debits will be put in this one format. Debits will be put in as positives. Credits will be put in as negatives. If you add them up, they should add up to zero because debits equal credits. Another valid format would be to put the debits in the left-hand column and credits in the right-hand column, and debits would equal credits. With that in mind, let's go right to the solution, and I know I'm going to talk through it quickly, but I just want to have you see the big picture. So, once again, here's the basic background, and we have our first transaction. We invested, the owner invested $50,000 of his own cash in the business in exchange for 10,000 shares of $1 par common stock. In this case, we received cash, so that's debit 50000 and we issued common stock, and they paid above and beyond the par value, so that excess goes into excess paid in capital. So these two added together is the total equity received. Let's move to the next one. Purchase $400 of inventory, paying $100 of cash, and purchasing the remainder on account. So we received inventory, that's a debit of 400 We paid cash, that's a credit of 100 and we owe 300 that's an increase in accounts payable. Next, we sold $150 of inventory to a customer for $500 cash and $200 on account. In this case, let's focus on the what we got and how we earned it, and then we'll focus on what we gave and the related expense. So, in this case, we got $500 cash, $200 of account receivable. Why? Because we made a sale. So that's our sales revenue. Now, how did we make it? Well, we sold $150 of inventory, inventory went down by crediting it, and our expenses cost of goods sold went up by $150. So we had a margin of $550 on the sale. Moving on, we paid $200 on account related to a prior inventory purchase. That means we're paying off, see this liability right here? We're paying it off, so we need to reduce it by debiting it $200, and we paid cash $200. Moving on, number five. We paid and recorded $1,000 of rent for the rental period that just ended. So we, we effectively have just stayed there and we paid for it just now. So we have to record a rent expense which increased debit $1,000 and credit cash $1,000, thus reducing our cash. Received a utility bill of $300 that we expect to pay next month. So we've used up the utilities. We have to record a utilities expense. That's an increase by debit $300. And utility payable we haven't paid yet, so our liability went up $300. Next, we paid off $120 of the utility bill. So here we owed it, and now we're going to pay it off. So that will have to be reduced by debiting $120, utility payable, 
and paying the cash credit 120. Moving on, we paid $1,100 for salaries for work that they just barely performed. We'll have to increase our salary expense, $1,100, and since we paid cash, we will reduce it by crediting it $1,100. Paid off $2,000 of the principal of a note payable. We debit the note payable to reduce the liability, and since we used cash, we'd have to credit cash $2,000. Purchase $7,000 of factory equipment. In this case, we have new equipment, so debit $7,000. And how did we pay for it? We haven't yet, so we have to increase our liability $7,000. So what that is, is we've just barely recorded. So we identified what happened, we analyzed it, and then we recorded the journal entries. Next, we need to post to the ledger. So down here below, these are all the ledger accounts you're going to need. As you can see, the black I put in were the opening balances. And then I labeled each of the posted entries in green with the number of the transaction. So this very first one, transaction one, debit $50,000 for the cash received when we issued capital stock of $1 par and had additional paid in capital, paid in excess. So uh, that's what we did. So all the green are just the posted entries. And then I used math to compute the balance. So in this case, we had 58,500 in debits to cash, thus increasing them. And we had these all crediting cash, thus decreasing them, resulting in an ending balance, which I put in this kind of brick orange color, 53,980, which is a debit. And I went and computed the balance. I put a double underline under every account, which represents the balance. Okay. Now that we have all these balances, we are ready to put together the trial balance. And all you have to do is just take these double underlined items. If it's a debit here for cash, you put it a debit down in the trial balance. If it's a credit here for capital stock, you put it as a credit down in the trial balance. So here we go. Here's alternative one, where you put all the debits in as positive numbers, credits in as negative numbers. If you add those up, it comes up to zero. Next one. You put all the debits in one column, all the credits in another column. You see the total debits are 189,980. Total credits are 189,980. Debits equal credits. This 189,980 is not total assets. Do not make that assumption because, as you can see here, we have some expenses. So that's it. That's what the whole case was about. I hope this very quick review, which took us an hour in class to complete, and now we've done it in eight minutes, uh, makes sense. And I hope it's a good review. And I will send this file to you in your email so you can get it and review it. Aloha.